son. Anthony. Yeah, Dad? Isn't there a video you're supposed to be working on? Uh... There are some messages that we might want not want everyone to understand. For instance, our new secret plans about artificial intelligence. For this reason, we created ciphers to encrypt messages. Some early um, ciphers, such as the Caesar shift, worked well. However, they were easy to decode. So early in the 20th century, mathematicians were trying to develop ciphers that were effective but difficult to decrypt. So in 1929, Lester S. Hill produced a cipher based on matrix multiplication. So like many ciphers, the alphabet is converted to numbers. So A becomes 1, B becomes 2, etc. So for this reason, when we're doing mathematics on the numbers, we will do everything with modular arithmetic, mod 26. So for our example, AI becomes 1, 9. And to encrypt the message, we convert it into a vector and multiply it by a key matrix. So this could be any matrix predetermined by the sender and the receiver, such as 1, 3, 2, and negative 1. To encrypt the message, you multiply the message by the key matrix. And this will, in our case, give us 28 and negative 7. But remember, this is mod 26. So this is equivalent to 2 and 19. Mod 26. So what is significant about Lester's um, cipher is that it achieves Shannon's diffusion. And what this means is that if you multiply... Um, a similar message where, say, only one letter is different, say you change an A to a B, the entire message will be different. This would give you 29 and negative 5, which is equivalent to 3 and 21. So this makes it a very effective encryption method for being difficult to decrypt. To decrypt the message when you know the key, you simply multiply the encrypted message by the inverse of the key matrix. And so the inverse of the key matrix is the matrix that's multiplied by the original key matrix will give you the identity matrix. However, you have to be careful because the modular inverse matrix will be different than when you normally find the inverse of the matrix. In our case, the inverse is 15, 19, 4, and 11, which multiplied out gives 391 and 217. Mod 26, this is equivalent to 1 and 9. And as you see, we have got back our original message about artificial intelligence. Rather than performing the Hill encryption 100 times by hand, it may be easier to use the Python code. This one is in Jupyter Notebooks using the Juno interface on an iPad. The first thing we must remember is that our input when using the Hill cipher must be restricted to having no capitalized letters and also no spaces in between. Once we have an input just like this, which can also be automated, we can go ahead and convert every single one of the letters into numbers. For example, A to 1 or 0, B to 1, C to 2, and so on and so forth. This index is easily accomplished in this section of code by using the innate ASCII indexing. Since we are using the Hill cipher, we must have our inputs grouped into the n value of the n by n matrix. So in this case, we're using a two by two. We must also group our inputs into twos. If we were to try to encode the word today, we'd group TO into one box, DA into another, but then when it comes to Y, well, we have an issue. In order to resolve this, 
we check the length of our input using modular arithmetic and mod 2 and test whether it's equal to 1. This checks whether our number of values is odd. If it is, then the letter B, value 1, which is, is automatically added to fix the length of code. We have our key matrix initializer. Over here, we have all the values which could be modified as you wish. As long as there is a modular inverse to that matrix, it will work. Then we get to the encryption process. If we remember that we've grouped by twos, when we have an input of length six, the number of groups we'll have will simply be six divided by two, which gives us one, two, three groups. Cycling through these groups in a for loop allows us to address each one of them and take a look at the numbers which are inside them, because at this point we've already done the letter to number conversion. So we take a look at these two numbers, n1 and n2, and then we multiply them against the matrix, the key matrix, to find the encrypted numerical values. In order to get our encrypted message in letters, we go ahead and reverse the ASCII indexing process shown in this section of code. At this stage, we have different groups with different values of numbers. We join them all together after converting them into characters, and voila, we have our change from hello dudes, how are you, to gibberish. So in the encryption process, we took our various inputs, A and B, converted them into numbers, and one and then two, and then had those multiplied by our matrix K to get new values and one and two prime, which were then converted into back into letters A prime and B prime. This entire process may easily be reversed by using the K inverse. However, since we're working in mod 26, this has to be performed slightly differently because we must have whole numbers in our matrix. And when we take the inverse of a matrix, we may have fractions. Fortunately, there's a strategy for approaching this. And the Python implementation of it has been worked on by John on Stack Overflow. To begin with, we have a matrix A. And we want to find our inverse of the matrix at mod 26. And so then P be equal to 26 and k will be our a. The adjunct of the matrix is found using this code below and then in order to find the modular inverse determinant we go ahead and use the code up here. The way the modular inverse determinant is found which we will describe as the modular inverse determinant the MID is that we know that it possesses this property that the determinant times the MID should always be equal to one. Hence, this value must be within the range one to whatever our mod value is, which is in this case 26. Thus, by testing these values to see if it does equal one, we go cycling from one to 26, we can determine what our MID should be. What's beautiful is that the MID times the adjunct of our key matrix is actually equal to the inverse matrix. Using the inverse matrix that we were now provided with or found, we can go ahead and take our encrypted letters and convert them back into numbers, the encrypted numbers we had before, and then multiply that by our inverse matrix to receive our unencrypted numerical values, which are then using the ASCII indexing principles, converted back into the letters that we desire. This is shown on the code to the left, which is essentially equivalent, just the reverse process of the code initially used for encryption. Our gibberish can finally be transformed using the inverse matrix back down into hello dudes, how are you? To crack an NYN Hill cipher without brute forcing it, of course, and trying every combination, there must be a particular set of requirements we've met. The 
particular sort of requirements are, first of all, knowing the ciphertext, because if you don't know the ciphertext, there's nothing to decode it from, and knowing a piece of text or guessing a piece of text inside of it that is n squared plus n minus 1 characters long, where n is the length and width of the particular key of the cipher. Now, let's move into an example so we can figure out why it's n squared plus n minus 1 for an n by n cipher. Let's say you've found out your friend Nolan has crates, uh, encoded a piece of text and you really want to know what's inside that text. Now we assume that Nolan probably put his mark on there somewhere, so we're going to assume his name is somewhere inside the text. Now we heard him talking about um, a, cipher, a hill cipher earlier, and he mentioned something about a 2x2 two two hill cipher, likely meaning that he encoded it with a 2x2 two two key. So we're going to assume that n in this case is 2. So n squared, 4, or plus n, 6, minus 1, 5. Hey, Nolan's perfect size, 5 characters. So let's assume, um, we don't know where it is in the text, but let's just assume that it's in the first position, just so, you know, we put it in the first position to figure out where it was, uh, or to just mark that it's his. So um, we put his in the first position, and we compare. So n goes to u, l goes to v, l goes to v, and a goes to q, and n goes to e. Because it's a 2x2 two two hill cipher, we know that it goes in by chunks, mainly u and v go, or n and o goes to u and v, and l and a go to q and v. In particular, we can write it mathematically as the key times no equals uv. Likewise, the key times la equals vq. Now, if we want to figure out what the, we, the whole point is to figure out what the key is, so we can decode the whole message. So we take the key and we multiply, multiply it by the whole so we can um, start to figure it out. Okay, so we're going to compress these two together um, so we can reverse engineer the solution. So we have this whole, the whole matrix, N-O-L-A, equals U-V, V-Q. Now, now that we have it set up, we can convert this into numbers because you can't do math with letters unless you're in algebra. So we know K, um, 15, oh, excuse me, 14, N is the 14th letter, O is the 15th letter, L is the 12th letter, and A is, of course, the first letter. U is the 21st letter, V is the 22nd letter, as well as V is also the 22nd letter, and Q is the 17th letter. Now we have numbers, and we can do some lovely mathematics. In this particular case, we're going to, um, when we're trying to figure out K, we'll have to divide by this matrix here. Now, any of you who have done anything about matrices will know you can't just divide matrices. You have to take the inverse. So we'll take our matrix over here, and we'll multiply it by the inverse of the matrix over here. And that's denoted just as the normal matrix with a little minus 1. Um, multiplying by the inverse is very similar to dividing. Um, it's just much easier to do with matrices, um, as you can't always divide, and most of the time can't divide. If you take this and figure it out, you'll figure out what the key is. Now remember, we don't want to multiply our ciphertext by the key to get out the original text. We want to take the inverse of the key, because the key more and more the key locks it, and the inverse of the key unlocks it. Now, if we multiply it by the ciphertext and we end up getting out something that's all jumbled, then we know that Nolan is in the wrong position. And we must move it around, testing out each position, to figure out where Nolan is in the text. Um, this is where the n squared plus n minus 1 comes in extremely important. Uh, because if we only had, let's say we, we didn't know, his, his, let's assume his name was Nola instead of Nolin. And it was just only four characters long. Well, we have a bit of an issue, because now we would, um, you know, we'd be fine on our first try, and this would still work, and our mathematics would work, and if this was the right position, it'd be great. 
But when we shift it over one, you see we only have one chunk, which I've denoted with these black bars as different chunks. Um, you'll see that we only have one chunk and two halves of the chunk. And because it's a two by two matrix, it only works in chunks of two. And if you try to, um, you know, squeeze two chunks together, <clears throat> your results will not be correct or mathematical. Um, now, we, now we'll move it along until we find um, the correct position for it to be in. And um, when we find the correct position it'll be in, it'll spit out regular text um, that you should be able to read. And that is how to crack an end by end Hill cipher. Thank you for watching our video on the Hill cipher and how to use Python to encrypt and decrypt messages using this method. If you would like to participate, there is a link to the Python script used in this video down below in the description. Thanks again.